this is Dingella Cambone on the road for the Dingella Cambone show um, here at ITM Trading. We are in Toronto at probably the biggest event uh, from the PDAC, the world's largest mining conference. We're at the Aquarium for the Silver and Gold Reception with one of the sponsors of the evening, Keith Newmar, CEO of First Majestic Silver. Keith, so good to see you with you. It's kind of like our yearly reunion here yeah it's been a while uh since you and i've been together it has been a while but what a day to yes. be talking the metals here i mean silver ripping gold ripping bitcoin we know what that's doing but first just want to get your comments on thoughts on this renewed energy that's almost entered the space here what do you make of the price action here well of course i love to see it <laughs> um do i un do, do i do i understand it um you know, that's a different topic altogether. You know, um, everyone's uh, banking on Powell lowering rates, right. or at least that's what the scuttlebutt I've seen is. So, you know, I guess if rates are getting lower, gold will go higher. But I, I don't even believe in that trade anyway. So, um, I, you know, gold is going higher as far as I'm concerned because governments are buying it. Uh, there's a rush into gold because of the de-dollarization of the world. And it's got nothing to do with in interest rates or anything like that. I mean, it is an interesting timing. And I mean, maybe the market finally is not believing the word of the Fed anymore. I mean, we kept hearing for so long about soft landing, about, oh, how inflation is getting better, about, you know, rate cuts and whatnot. So maybe the market's saying, you know what, I'm, I'm done with, I'm done with the Fed. That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Wishful uh, thinking. Yeah. No, I, I was listening to someone earlier talking about the Fed as well, that, you know, they, they, the, the Fed has been involved in manipulating silver prices down. And he was convinced that the Fed is involved in, you know, price fixing in, 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 silver, in the silver market. And he went a little bit, you know, uh, to an extreme, I thought. But um, there's a lot of people out there that believe the governments are involved in the, 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 the trading of these metals and are suppressing prices. Well, look you've been a champion of silver for so long i mean i've always said it you're really one of the, the you know the most popular faces obviously in in the silver market um and you've pounded the table on so many issues when it comes to silver you've been a defender of the industry i mean what are your thoughts when you hear about silver and price manipulation i know your thoughts in the past but has it changed i mean could there be truth there you know i it's always such a hard thing to talk about because um you know you don't want to you know, be, uh, you know, a conspiracy, conspiracy theorist, at least I don't like to be that. Um, markets trade where the money is, in my view. Um, so you could call it manipulation if you wish, but I think it's just, you know, managing books, managing the financial system and whatever, why they, why they do it that way or what's behind it, um, you know, try to dissuade uh, investors from buying precious metals, you know, uh, you know, back in the 70s, uh, when the, the famous letter was written uh, about the COMEX of uh, finally uh, getting uh, gold contracts in place, you know, the, the government uh, wanted those contracts in place to scare away investors because they knew that once there was a paper market, they could then get involved in that paper market and manipulate the price um, like they did on Bitcoin. And that's why, you know, you can argue all you want. but. Um, you know, Bitcoin had no paper um, uh, instrument really until re recent times. So it's been it's become way more volatile as a result of that. Let me ask you this, I, I, and I want to talk to you about silver as a critical uh, metal. But but first, for our audience that most of them really do believe in gold, silver, Bitcoin as sound money. I mean, why have you always been drawn to silver? What is it about silver? and gold that makes you feel, yeah, this is, this is the solution for me. Well, gold and silver are completely different. Uh, gold is uh, money, the granddaddy of all money. And as we de-dollarize around the world, which is obviously happening, uh, gold is your hedge against de-dollarization. Silver is, is, a, is a strategic metal. You know, I came up with that phrase over a decade ago. I've, I've seen other people also uh, uh, repeat that phrase. But I came from a copper company. And uh, so when I left that copper company in 2000, um, and, and I was looking around at what I should do next, and gold was obvious, right? But there, for, for me, there was just too many gold companies. And I looked at silver, 
And I, I looked at the supply and demand fundamentals right. of silver, and I was amazed. Um, and I said, this is like copper. And then I decided to put together a silver company. On that point, the Silver Institute estimates 1.2 billion of consumption of silver in 2023. 1.2 billion. Where's the consumption? Uh, well, the, the production is 800, uh, 820,000 ounces a year. Oh, pardon me, 820 million ounces a year of production. And consumption is 1.2 billion in 2023. The estimate for 2024 is 1.4 billion ounces of consumption. So you've got two industries, the electric car industry and the solar panel industry, who is now consuming 30% of that world supply. Wow. Uh, and, that, and, that, and those industries weren't around you know, 10 years ago. I was going to ask you because you saw Apple pulling away from uh, electric vehicles. I mean, does that at all impact the use of silver going forward? If others you start... Know. Well, well, so what? So hybrids, you know, um, you know, hydrogen cars, um, a, a, any kind of electronic device requires silver. And you, and you go buy a new fancy car today and you step into it. And basically you're looking at a computer screen. Um, you, you go back 10 or 20 years and it was all buttons and, and switches and, right. you know, quite a bit different. So even a fuel combustion car consumes way more silver today than it did 20 years ago just because of electronics. So you get into the hybrids, you get into hydrogen cars, you know, which you know a lot of people believe that's where we're going to end up uh, being uh, or going to. Uh, these vehicles require silver the same as an electric car. I've said you are a champion for the industry. Now you've really been focused on lobbying for silver to be recognized as a critical mineral. Why is this vital? Well, it's going to help with permitting. Uh, it's going to help with just um, fi financing. Um, you know, there's not enough investment going into silver. You know, you, you know yourself. So you have a $1.2 billion um, or 1.2 billion ounces of consumption and, and 820 million ounces of production. That's a serious problem. So we're, we're six years in to uh, this deficit. The deficit in 2024 looks like it's going to be bigger than 2023. And why is that? because miners aren't producing enough silver for the needs of the human race. So we're adopting all these green technologies, all these new ways of doing things. No, you know, you still want your cell phone, you still want uh, computers, you still want fancy cars, you know, we, and, and we want to electrify the planet in ways that um, you know, are going to be greener. And, and it's interesting because a nuclear power plant cons consumes a ton of silver. Uh, so any, anything green, Anything that is, is involved in electricity consumes silver. And we're just simply, as, as a mining industry, not supplying enough. And that's going to affect prices, of course. But Well, you know, I started by talking about the price action. And I think the number one question is, you know, can we finally believe this rally? Is this finally going to be the breakthrough that gold, and especially silver investors, have been waiting for, Keith? Only time will tell. Um, I, I've been doing, I've been in the mining sector for 35 years. I've been right. talking silver for 20 years. You know, I, when I put First Majestic together, uh, silver was five, $5. And I said at the time that I expected silver to go to its all time, its, its previous high of $50. It took 10 years to do it. It took longer than I thought, but it did get to $50. I didn't expect that it was going to go down to 12 right. after 50. Right. You know, that was crazy. And it's now been, you know, then it's gone back and forth, back and forth. And it's been stuck in this kind of 23 to $28 range for the last, right. you know, I guess two years, right. uh, which in itself does not make any sense. You know, I'm a triple digit silver guy. You know, we're, you know, we're mining for every one ounce of gold, seven ounces of silver. And so you do the math, you know, today gold broke through a new high, 2114 and closed that today, which is fantastic. It's, it's dragging, it will, it will drag all commodities with it. It's silver was up 75 cents today to 23.75. But you know, you, do, you divide 21.14 by seven, and that's where silver should be trading at. You were one of, I think you were the first to really coin triple digit silver. Oh, so that's still, you still, that's still the vision. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. How do you not get caught up in, in, in the Bitcoin price action? We were having a good conversation offline, yeah. but can you just share, like, how do you not get caught up in that fear of missing out? Like, I got to be in Bitcoin. 
you know, I was hoping it was going to go down to 10,000, and that was kind of my number. You know, it went up to, you know, whatever, almost 70,000. That would have been your entry point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was watching and watching, and I even had a, I think, a, a, a fellow that you interviewed, um, I forget his name, um, but he was predicting for $10,000 Bitcoin. Said, okay. Gary Soloway. That's right, yeah. exactly. And that was his magic yeah. number, right? So I figured, okay, I'm going to listen to him. I'll, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Right. wait. When it gets right. to 10000 right. I'll, I'll buy some. And I, of course, it didn't get down there. It got to 15 or somewhere around yeah. there. And now it's back up to close to 70000 And, you know, look, it, it's, uh, uh, you know, I don't really understand it, quite frankly. You know, we, we now have our own mint and uh, we're producing silver. Uh, we've been selling silver to the public, physical silver, uh, since 2008. And we had our booth today at the PDAC. We've got silver all over the booth and people are coming up and touching it, holding it. Right. The they're, demand they're, is there. They're, they're amazed, but just holding right. a chunk of gold right. or a chunk of silver, it, it does something to the mental, it does it to your, to, to your brain because the amount of energy that's contained in that bar of gold or silver, it's enormous. And, uh, uh, to, uh, and but yet you can't touch Bitcoin. It's something right. you can't explain, right? Yeah. When you pick up silver or pick up gold, mm. right? Yeah, it's just your. It's a human thing. You just go whoa, and you just like that's really cool, right? What do you want the folks at home to know about First Majestic and this year going forward? What are you focused on? Yeah, well, very much. Uh, we're still, we, we put some cost uh, cutting initiatives in place in 2023, which were pretty critical because with the uh, shutdown of Jared Canyon in early 2023, that was pretty disruptive for the business. And uh, uh, we really had to kind of pull up our socks and and, and work hard to get the financial uh, 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 situation back on track. And uh, we left, I was very pleased with uh, how we left the, the year. Uh, our fourth quarter of 2023 was an extremely good quarter. Uh, Santa Elena uh, produced a record amount of ounces. Uh, that mine alone produced 3 million um, silver equivalent ounces in that one quarter. So analyzed as you know, 12 million ounces. We're, we're projecting it'll be around 9 to 10 in 2024. Uh, Sendimus will be around 12 to 13. And we've got some challenges at Lincoln Tata with a, with a water issue there. But you know, when you have a portfolio of fraud properties, that you, you never have, you know, 20 years into this, you never have all mines doing perfectly. There's always a problem. And why it goes from one year to the next, and right. it's just the way life is. Uh, finally, Keith, like I said, we're at uh, the Ripley's Aquarium in Toronto. I mean, this is arguably the event uh, during the PDAC. Over 2,000 people expected tonight. I mean, do you think it feels a little different than past years? You feel like there's renewed energy in the space, in the, in the precious metal space? You know, I, I talked to a lot of people and, uh, you know, we came back from a conference in, um, in Munich and then yeah. in, in Zurich, right. you know, back in November. Right. And I really noticed the crowd was quite a lot larger than normal. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the crowd is younger than normal. And you had family money. Um, and I think, I, I don't know for certain, uh, but I think there are people that have made money on Bitcoin. Um, and, and are looking to um, diversify their por yeah their portfolios and uh, and they're coming to the mining sector because it's cheap you know it's dirt cheap like we've not seen these types of valuations in the mining sector since geez, uh, probably 2000 2001 you know in that range so um, it is getting looked at seriously um, and then coming and then we just came back from the BMO conference last week very good good vibe there. You know, people aren't throwing a lot of money at the sector, yeah. but they're definitely turning over, you know, rocks and looking to see, okay, what am I going to put on my list of stocks to buy? And then uh, um, the conference today, I'm not sure if you had a chance to walk around, but it's shocking I, how many the, people yeah, were there. I saw, it. I saw it. So, so, so go silver and don't tell Keith that silver is the poor man's gold. No, right? no don't do that. It's its own person, own... <laughs> It's a, it's a strategic metal and extremely important for what we do uh, as a human race. And, uh, you know, I love gold. Don't get me wrong. I, I do. I am the chairman yeah. of First Mining Gold. So, uh, but silver's but, number uh, one for silver's, you. Silver's, silver's, silver's right. definitely number one. Keith Newmeyer, champion for the silver industry. Have fun tonight. Try, try and enjoy it a little bit. Well, I hope you get a chance to walk around <laughs> yeah, as well. Yeah, well, yeah. I hope I get to enjoy it a little bit.
But I uh, enjoyed speaking with you and I hope you enjoy your coverage. We'll have more incredible content coming your way. So be sure to stay tuned to the Daniela Camboni Show on the road here for ITM Trading at the Ripley's Aquarium in Toronto. Stay tuned.